Matthew 4. Go to Matthew 4, 17. Last week we talked about the kingdom. I want to build in us, Tommy and Sarah, I want to build in us this concept, understanding, this vivid reality of the kingdom. Say kingdom. Kingdom. Come on, say kingdom. kingdom. Jesus comes out of the desert. He's been tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. He's fasting. Satan approaches, tempts him with food first, tempts him with uh, a quick way to fame and, and, and victory by throwing himself off the, off, you know, proving who he is. But then he saves the ace card, the biggest temptation. Now, when we say temptation, when, Nancy, when it says Jesus was tempted, this wasn't just, oh, Jesus is like, oh, whatever, devil, whatever. No, no. These were temptations. You've been tempted. Can I get an amen? amen. And you succeeded to, to say no, and then you succumbed and said yes. Can I get, can I get an amen? amen? Jesus was tempted. Now, Satan waits for the final temptation is, hey, bow down, worship me, and I'll give you. I'll give you what you came for, Jesus. See, Satan knew what Jesus came for. Psalms 2 tells us Jesus is coming. Jesus' inheritance from his father. If your father or mother or your uncle has passed away and left you an inheritance, you got something from them. They left it to you in their will. Jesus' inheritance from God the Father are the nations of the world, the kingdoms of the world. Satan in the desert tempts him with the ultimate temptation. It wasn't crack cocaine. It wasn't a woman. It wasn't a, a new Mercedes. It was what Jesus came for. And what Jesus came for was to strip the authority away from Satan and fallen angels to strip back the authority of the nations that was given to him in the garden when Adam gave over dominion of the earth to the enemy. Can I get an amen? Satan came back and says, I will take, Jesus comes and says, I will take back what is mine. So Satan says, Jesus, if you'll just bow down to me, I'll give you the kingdoms. I'll give you, oh, you don't want Ethiopians to starve? Here you go, Jesus, I'll give you Ethiopia. Oh, you, you don't want Russia to self-destruct and kill more of their own people? Then, then, then I'll give you the Russian kingdom. Oh, oh, listen, listen, you don't want your kingdoms of the world to go through this process over the next 2,000 years called life? Listen, I'll give you the kingdoms. You just bow down and worship me. That was a real temptation. Can I get an amen? Jesus obviously rejects it. It says, get out of here. I'm going to take it back my way. His first message out of the desert was repent, for the kingdom is here. So say that with me, repent, for the kingdom is here. When Jesus walks out, the first message wasn't, hey, listen, I'm going to die on a cross for your sins. Hey, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rise from the dead in three days. Oh, hey, listen, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal your broken legs, your blind eyes, your broken heart, your, your confused mind. I'm, he, didn't, he didn't preach healing. He didn't preach the cross. He didn't preach resurrection. He didn't preach David and Goliath, Moses and, and, and uh, Noah's Ark. He didn't preach the Old Testament. He came in preaching this thing. He says, hey, Willie Richards, change the way you think. Because the word repent simply means change the way you think. When we repent from sin, what I used to think was cool, the, the, the sound of the, of the beat of the drum at the club down on that corner of town, that doesn't excite me anymore because I changed the way I think about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't entertain me anymore. That's not what I want because I changed the way that I think about life. Can I get an Amen repenting of sin isn't I'm sorry. It's I repent. I will not talk to you like that anymore, honey. I'm really sorry I was rude to you. I repent from that. I'm going to change the way that I think that it's not okay because I'm the man that I can talk to you and degrade you like that. Are, are, are you with me? 
he comes out of the desert and he says, Jews, Israel, Sadducees, Pharisees, James, John, Peter, Andrew, Judas. Yeah, that Judas. Judas, change the way you think. Think about what? Sin? No. Change the way you think about the kingdom. Hey, Peter, fisherman, Peter, big, bad, bold, disciple leader, you know, Peter, right? Hey, Peter, change the way you think about the kingdom. Repent. The kingdom's not coming with a big Taj Mahal sized building with big colors and flags and armies and horses. And, and we're not coming in with an Israeli army to destroy Pontius Pilate to go kick Roman soldiers' butts and ultimately end up in Italy and overtake Rome and destroy Caesar. My kingdom is right here. I am the kingdom. You got to repent from your vision from your thought process of what you think the Messiah is going to come do for you. You got to change the way you understand this concept called kingdom. So the very essence of Jesus's ministry, he healed. Can I get an amen? He taught. Can I get an amen? He taught morals. He taught ethics. He raised the bar on the Ten Commandments. He did all sorts of things that confounded the thought process of religious people. But his message that was peppered all through everything he does over 162 times, he talks about the kingdom. He doesn't talk that much about the resurrection. In fact, he only tells his disciples, hey, I'm gonna die. He didn't stand in front of the 5,000 and say, hey, I'm going to die. He didn't tell the whole world about his resurrection. He told his, he told his intimate people some more details, but the main topic, the main reason he came was to change the way we think about his kingdom. So when we look at the book of Matthew, when you look at your current, look at Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom is at hand. So when you look through Matthew chapter five, he starts talking about the Beatitudes. When you just look at the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, three, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He starts the Beatitudes with heaven. He ends the Beatitudes with heaven. How many times is kingdom mentioned in the Lord's prayer? Matthew chapter six, twice. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Are you with me? Thy kingdom come. That's his first request of God. The first is acknowledging who God is. Our Father, Abba God. Second, he, he blesses him. He, he shows respect for his name. Hallowed be thy name. Oh, now the request. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done. Are you with me? You got to dig into this concept. So in chapters five, he talks about a lot of practical, uh, uh, um, or, or not practical, but he, he talks about spiritual concepts. He, he starts to give us keys to the kingdom. Now we, we'll talk later about keys, but in Matthew chapter five, he starts to preach and he says, hey, listen, you've heard it said that it's wrong to commit adultery, but I say unto you, it's wrong if you lust after that woman in your heart, then you've already committed adultery. So therefore, don't do that. He just raised the bar. Are you with me? And he raises the bar in chapters five and six. In chapter seven, he goes around and starts to heal people. So he preaches the kingdom. Are you with me? Chapters five and six, he preaches about the kingdom. He gives good morals, good ethics, raises the bar. He says, hey, you want a key? Don't bring your offering to the, to the, to the altar. Go, go ask for forgiveness of that person who you know is offended by you. Go, go seek forgiveness. That's a key. Are, are you with me? Hey, listen, you've heard it said it's wrong to murder, but, but you got hatred in your heart for that skin color or that nationality. You need to go repent of that, and that key will loosen and unbind that heart and heart, and it will unlock that thing in your mind, and you'll get to see the kingdom because all of a sudden your mindset will change about different people on the earth. So he's giving keys away, 
right? He's going to unlock hardened hearts, distracted mind, chaotic souls, bad marriages. He's, he's just giving keys. How many sermons did Jesus preach? How many crusades did he lead? How many seminars did he put on? Not too many. Are you with me? What did he do after he preached? Demon out. Blind eyes open. Crooked legs healed. Oh, oh, you want, you want to know that I know what I'm talking about, the kingdom? Bring your broken, bring your blind, bring your deaf, bring your dumb, bring your imprisoned, bring those in bondage. I'll heal them. Why? To show off? No, to prove that he knows about the kingdom. Are, are you with me? See, Jesus didn't just preach, but he brought power. The kingdom brings hope through a message, but then power through reality. Are, are you with me? Let's put ourselves in the shoes of Peter for a second. Peter is a cocky, bold fisherman. Jesus picks him and says, hey, you, follow me. So Peter's like, what, where are we going? We're going to go build the kingdom. We're going to go build a kingdom, Peter. You remember the Old Testament, the Messiah, he's going to bring his kingdom? Can you imagine Peter going, heck yeah. He goes and gets his brother. He gets his friends. He goes, man, we're going to go kick some Roman butt. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go kill some Romans. The Messiah is finally here. Are you with me? Peter and the boys, the 12 disciples, all they could envision when Jesus started telling them about the kingdom and they became disciples, they started to follow him to build the kingdom. The kingdom in their mindset was they were going to kill Roman soldiers. They're going to uproot the Roman people that have invaded the Israel Jewish nation and dominated them, treated them like dogs, enslaved them, tortured them, abused them, hurt them, took advantage of them. All the oppression that these Romans had put on them, the Messiah is going to come and build the kingdom. So therefore, these 12 disciples, they're on board because now the Messiah has finally come. Are you with me? So much so, they start to hear him talk about the Beatitudes saying, blessed are the peacemakers. Could you imagine Peter's first hearing that? James, what's he talking about? Blessed be the peacemakers. Oh, he's just talking to the people. We're going to go kill some Romans. We ain't going to make no peace, man. We're going to build the kingdom. Right? Then he starts seeing Jesus heal people. He goes, man, this really is the Messiah. We picked the right guy. We're on the right team. Remember when Peter chops off the ear of the Roman soldier in the garden? Do you know why he cut off his ear? Because he missed his stinking head. <laughs> Three and a half years of learning about the kingdom, he's still wanting to kill Romans. He didn't get the kingdom. Are you with me? Yes, Acts 1, let's go there. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Jesus has risen from the dead in Acts chapter 1, and he is about to ascend to heaven. Let's just pick up in Acts chapter 1, verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, Jesus taken up to heaven, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he says you have heard from me for truly John baptized with water but you John uh, uh, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now therefore when they had come together they asked him saying Lord Will you at this time, what, restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus responds in seven, it is not for you to know the times or season which the Father has put in his own authority, 
But you, David Granada, shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the other most parts of the earth. This is what Jesus says. Even at his ascension, his boys are saying, Jesus, are you now going to come build your kingdom and restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus says, when you get filled with the kingdom, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, when you get the kingdom of God inside of you, then you will go to Judea, Israel, Judea, Samaria. Then you'll go to Rome. Then you'll go to the entire earth and conquer the earth with the kingdom of God. Now, here's our brain mentality, at least mine. Here's a block that the Lord broke for me this week. I want you to exchange the word kingdom for government. So just say that kingdom equals government. Say it like we mean it. Kingdom Kingdom. equals government. Jesus comes out of the desert. Repent for the government of heaven is here. Hey, the government of heaven is here. See, we don't understand concept of kingdom because we live in a democracy. We live under this thing called government. But we do understand government. We do understand that we have elected officials that are in positions of power that rule over us and they make laws whether we like it or not. They, they uh, exact taxes whether we like it or not. They rule over us. Can I get an amen? Now, we are confused and we are, we are under the misunderstanding that if we could only get our guy into the government, if we could just get our group into the government, if we could get rid of that other group, you know, that group, That group of governmental officials that have no idea what they're doing, right? Are are you with me? That group, if we could just get rid of that guy, those people, and put our people in government, then the government would now function correctly, and the government would then provide, and the government would then be at peace, and then my life would be good because I would be under the government of those people that those people are men, But it's not until the government of the kingdom comes to the government of man and supersedes man's government, and then the kingdom, the government of heaven will come in, establish rule, establish reign, bring peace, not more oppression. Are are you with me? See, what Jesus preached was the government of heaven. He says, in my government, children do not go hungry. In my government, wives do not get beaten. In my government, people are not judged by their skin color or their nationality, and they are not oppressed or put down based upon their education or the lack of hair or their height. In my government, there's no corruption. In my government, there's no backdoor deals. There's no you know, back alley. There's no child prostitution in my government. There is no, are you with me? See, he said, when he came out of the desert, he says, my kingdom's here, but we're still looking for our government, our kingdom. We want more churches. We want more people in our political group. I don't care what political group you are, but your group you think is right. Yes or no? Yes. We all do. We want our people in the schools. We want our people. And all of a sudden, we think that if we could do it our way, the problem with our way is it would end the same way that it ends now because we aren't under the rule and reign of God's kingdom. When the kingdom of heaven comes to your family, then the man who's governing the family won't rule in a way that wouldn't be unkingdom-like. Do it. I'm the man here. I'm the king. This is my house. I tried that once. I still have a scar right here. (laughs) Stacy said, excuse me, what did you say, honey? No, I'm just joking. (laughs) But if we'll take this word kingdom out, I think something will click in our minds if we'll exchange it for the word government. Because we understand that. You remember the governor on your go-kart as a kid, guys? And we all wanted to take the governor off? Why? We didn't like that slow kingdom. We want to go fast. (laughs) Are, Are you with me? Jesus says, our father, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy government come. Oh, let your will be done. God, if you'll govern my checkbook, then Cameron's kingdom of gold, rubies, silver, diamonds, houses, cars, watches, whatever. If his government will come, thy kingdom, if thy government come to my heart full of pride, my heart full of envy, my heart full of bitterness, my heart full of pride, whatever that is, thy government come and rule in this thing. Do I want the kingdom in my heart? Sometimes. Other times I want my kingdom. You know how hard I work? I come home at night, there ain't no food on the table. Most of the time there is, but I'm just, this is just, this is just an example. I should put like a little pre, but, but think about it. How many times, no, for real, how many times have I come home after a long day and said, well, what's everybody else been doing all day? Man, I got to take this out. I got to clean this up. Oh, they parked in my spot. It's my house. It's my kingdom, my kingdom, my kingdom. This is my cubicle, my job. They don't have the right to come into my office. This is my space. Thy kingdom, thy government come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Are, are you with me? Turn, turn with me to, I have a couple more verses. First John, First John 3, 8. God is going to show you his kingdom. 1 John 3, 8. He who sins is of the devil. (sighs) Okay, sorry God, do what? He who sins is of the devil. Why? Who else is building the kingdom? Satan. Where is Satan's kingdom? We talked about this last week. Remember, it's downtown at that street corner where all that bad stuff goes on. That's Satan's kingdom, right? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, yeah, I think it's the strip on Vegas. That, oh, that's Satan's kingdom. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's Hollywood. Yeah. No, no, it's Washington. No, no, no. Uh, where's Satan's kingdom? It's in the heart of man. Where is God's kingdom? It's in the heart of man. When Jesus returns, do you realize we're not all going to just fly and go to heaven out in outer space somewhere and live on planet, you know, Zeon out there somewhere? Do you realize that? Do, you, do we realize that God will reestablish earth and we will live on earth and he'll put his kingdom there? Jo- Revelation 21, 22, read it for yourself. The kingdom of God comes down to earth and now God can be God with his people again. Are you with me? His kingdom will be established in the physical, but we're not waiting for that. We're waiting for it right now. You have the ability to take the kingdom of God into the car dealership when you buy a car. You have the ability to take the kingdom of God into the abortion clinic or outside the abortion clinic when they're loving on people that are and helping them reconsider what they're doing. You take the kingdom of God with you wherever you go. You get to choose that the kingdom of God comes out. Does that, does that make sense? First John, y'all stand up. Let's, let's close with this. First John chapter three, verse eight. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus manifested himself so that he might destroy the kingdom of the devil. We could talk about it all day long. When Jesus healed people. When he went into Samaria, he was bringing his government into Samaria. When he went to Mount Hermon, Caesarea Philippi, and he said, hey, upon this rock, I'll build my church. He was taking his government into that dark territory. Jesus is bringing his government. 
The question is, do we want to be in it? Do we want to be a citizen of his government? Are you with me? Do you want to be a citizen? Here's how we're going to close. I want you to move in power. I want you to move in power. And I want you to ask yourself, when's the last time you preached about the kingdom? And when's the last time you moved in the power of the kingdom? Moving in the power of the kingdom will bring healing in your household. Moving in the power of the kingdom will bring you to your knees in repentance. Moving in the power of the kingdom will draw you to lay hands on that sick person's body and pray for him. Moving in the power of the spirit will cause you to write a check to support that thing that God's calling you to support. Moving in the power of the Holy Spirit will cause you to clap and shout and praise Jesus on aisle three at HEB. Moving in the power of the kingdom will cause you to do things that bring power to the message, power to the principles of the kingdom. Are you with me? This week, today, I want you to say, God, you have permission to move in me with power. And then I want you to go find that opportunity. Don't sit back and say, okay, God, if you want me to heal somebody, well, bring him to my house and let them knock on my door and stand in my living room and turn around three times and jump up. You know, no, get outside and go look for that person. Are you with me? Let's pray. Let's pray. Jesus, out loud. Come on, Jesus. I love you. I praise you. I bless you. God, I need your government. God, I need your government. God, I submit to your government. God, I desire to be a king, uh, to be in your kingdom. Listen, the Bible simply says this. The Bible simply says this. If you want to be in the kingdom of Jesus, in the kingdom of God, Ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Repent from your wicked ways. Turn around. Change the way you live. Change the way you think. And give your heart to Jesus. It's that simple to walk through the door of the kingdom. Are you with me? Then it's learning about how to live in the kingdom. Let's pray together. Jesus. I need you to change me from the inside out. Change the way I think and show me your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And everybody said.